This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we're going to demonstrate the face, slit, and bind zipper approach. This zipper is typically used in a bimini to allow for the passage of a backstay on a sailboat. Uh, the wire will come through this uh, slit that accommodates the uh, zipper. Sailrite is also in the process of creating a video using the same approach to install a finished zipper, so that video is coming soon. In the meantime, let's get started and show you the face, slit, and bind zipper approach. This application is for the exiting of a backstay wire in a sailboat. We'll be using a prefabricated 2-inch acrylic facing tape as a reinforcement for the zipper installation. As the title suggests, we'll be using a 2-inch umbrella facing and we're applying the double-sided tape, part number 129, down both sides of this 2-inch facing tape. We're installing this zipper in a scrap piece of fabric just to demonstrate the process of how to sew in this zipper using the face slit and bind approach. Now we'll peel off the transfer paper so we can reveal a little bit of the glue and create approximately a half inch hem on the two short ends of the facing tape. We've already cut the facing to size. You want the facing to be approximately uh, two inches longer on each end, so a total of uh, at least four extra inches. Here's an illustration showing approximately two inches of uh, facing going past the uh, point where the zipper stops. Brian is peeling up the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and he's applied the uh, double-sided basting tape to both the long edges and both the short edges. Now Brian's using the grease pencil here to mark a line the appropriate length and then he's going to apply the uh, facing so that the line is directly in the center of the facing. We don't do it here but it's a good idea to also put that same line on the opposite side of the fabric because you can use that line as a guide for your hot knife when it comes to uh, slitting this which is done in a later step. We'll be using the Sarite 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system. We're going to sew a straight stitch around the perimeter of the 2 inch facing. And we're going to do a straight stitch that's approximately 8 millimeters in length. You can easily get by with a 6 millimeter stitch length if you like. And do some reversing there at the begin, as you saw Brian doing there. And we're also using Tanara thread. Tanara thread is a lifetime guaranteed thread. A polyester V92 thread is a good thread as well, which is UV resistant, but not UV proof as the Tanara or the Helios thread is. You'll notice that when Brian gets to the corner, he will bury his needle at the appropriate spot and he uses a reverse lever to find that spot, lifts the foot and pivots on the buried needle and then he lowers his foot and continues to sew. He'll do the same thing at each of the four corners. We'll skip ahead to the end here and here he's just locking his stitch in place with a few reverse stitches. And now, the 2-inch facing has been secured to the top side of this application. We're going to apply a quarter-inch basting tape to this number 10 Vizlon YKK zipper on each side. And keep that uh, double-sided tape as far away from the teeth as possible. Peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue, and then we'll baste that zipper onto the underside. This is the side that does not have the facing on it. All right, want to make sure that zipper is centered. If you had drawn a line on the canvas, you could use that line as your centering point. We're just using the stitch lines that we sewed up alongside the two inch facing as a reference. The zipper is longer than our application needs to be and uh, we'll trim it on both ends after we've sewn it in place. We take it over to the Sayrite 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system and we'll put a stitch right along the flange of the tape. 
The stitch should not be too close to the teeth, but obviously not too close to the raw edge of the zipper flange. Reverse at the beginning to lock your stitch in place, and you'll notice there that Brian started right at the end of the facing where the uh, facing starts. You can see kind of see through it through that fabric. And on this opposite end, he will also stop sewing right where the facing stops and reverse to lock the stitch in place. Notice the zipper has not been trimmed to size yet, it's too long. Now we'll do that exact same procedure to the opposite side of the zipper. You can choose not to use the quarter inch basting tape to hold the zipper in place, but if you do that, you've got to be careful the zipper doesn't move as you sew it. So Sayrite recommends using a basting tape to hold everything in place, that way you don't get a deviating zipper. There we are at the end. Now Brian will trim up his uh, st threads and then we'll turn it over so you can look at the uh, top side. Brian's going to go ahead and insert the sliders. Uh, he's going to start this slider, the skinny end down, so he pushes the slider onto the teeth, pulls the teeth apart, and then pulls the slider into position. There we go. Now he's going to start a second slider, fat end, first and he will feed both sides of the zipper tape into the slider at the same time, hold carefully, and pull the slider into place. These two locking sliders now meet, so anything can protrude out from between them. Now he opens up the zipper so he can gain access to the uh, canvas and also the facing that's on the underside and we're using a, the Sayerite Professional Ingle Hot Knife and cutting on top of a piece of glass to prevent damage to the tabletop. If you draw on your uh, line down the center of the canvas, as we discussed earlier, you could use that as a reference. Here Brian's just being careful to make sure that that uh, cut line is right in the center of the zip. Brian stops cutting right at the uh, point where he sewed across the short end of the two inch facing on both ends. If you don't have a hot knife, you could use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. He's gonna pull the sliders off of the zipper. Here, that makes it easier to sew the binding on next. Uh, because the zipper doesn't get in the way. We're gonna use the uh, right angle binder, which is new here at Sarahite for 2012, and we're going to use a Stamoid binding. This is a vinyl uh, that is navy color. This is a three-quarter inch binding uh, because we're using the right angle binder, which is a three-quarter inch binder. You could also do it with a one-inch binding using a standard binder. Uh, we're going to show it with a three-quarter inch standard binder uh, coming up next, but uh, first off, we're going to show it sewing uh, the binding on with the right angle binder that's new for 2012. Work your project as close to the uh, beginning of the cut as possible so the binding is very close to that uh, junction uh, or start of the cut. Uh, it'll be approximately an inch away from it, but uh, that is close enough that we could cover it nicely with leather in a later step. Brian's pushing the uh, teeth or pulling the teeth away from the compound walking foot of the Sarah at 111 sewing machine. This can also be done with a Sayerite Ultra Feed, the LSZ-1, or the LS-1 sewing machine as well. It work all the way, or sew the binding on, all the way to uh, where the start of the cut, or the end of the cut, stops. Getting as close to it as possible. Don't worry about getting right up to where that uh, cut line is. Brian's going to cut the excess uh, binding uh, from the binder attachment here so uh, he can easily pull it through. That doesn't have to be done, but he likes to do that. And see how close he gets here? And then he'll do a little bit of reversing here to lock his stitch in place. Using the right angle binder, you can only do a few stitches in reverse because the binding does not like to feed in a reverse manner through the right angle binder. And that's one side complete. Now he just needs to do the same thing to the opposite side. This will be the top side of our project and we'll be installing a leather patch there to finish off the ends. On the underside we'll be installing a sumbrella patch. However, you could install a leather patch on both sides or a sumbrella patch on both sides. Just uh, we chose leather for the top side. 
Brian's refeeding the uh, binding into the right angle binder and prepares to sew the other side just as he did previously. Pushes the zipper so it's out of the way so the walking feet can do their job. And take your time here when you start to sew. You want to try to get as close as possible to the junction of where the start of the cut or the end of the cut uh, is positioned and is sew along the edge. We'll not show all this. We'll skip ahead. Here we prepared another panel. We put the facing on the one side in a zipper, a black zipper, on the uh, underside. There's the facing on the top side. So it's already been sewn down and the slit has been made. We're going to use the standard uh, three-quarter inch swing away binder here. The majority of Sayerite customers have the one inch swing away uh, binder which is our standard binder and it'll work here as well. However, in this video we're using the three-quarter inch binder and we're pushing the project up as close as possible to the junction of where that uh, slit begins in our canvas. The V is what I should call it. And then once we're happy with the location and how our binding is positioned, we simply start sewing. The reason we switched over to this uh, fabric samples, we wanted to be able to show it with a standard binder because many of you have that out already and I don't want you to feel like you need to purchase the right angle binder for this application or this project. Make sure the material is pushed all the way up inside the binder and hold those teeth back from the walking foot. This is a standard foot that we're using on this Ultrafeed LSZ-1 sewing machine. Now the end of this panel is just uh, roughly cut. It's not finished because this is just for an example purpose to show you that it can be done with a standard binder. Now let's trim the binding and take a look at our finished results. How close do we get to the V-junction? Pretty good. The binding actually got very close to the V-junction, but notice it's not perfectly sewn at that point. Don't worry, we're going to be putting that uh, patch that we discussed earlier on that area right here. On the top side, which is here, and the underside. Now let's do the other side. Now the other side we're going to do from the opposite end. So we're going to start from this end, because this end is actually split open. Uh, which is always easier, believe it or not. It's the uh, V-junction that's a little bit more difficult. But it can be done if you had a V-junction on this end as well. We just want to show that it's possible to do it with a standard binder. Uh, here we're coming up to the point, so we're going to have to we'll probably stop right about an inch or so away from it. As we get close to the V, we have to help the fabric uh, to be compressed so that it feeds as close as possible up to the V. And then I did some reversing there to lock the stitch in place. Let's take a look at the uh, results. We'll trim off the excess binding here with some scissors. As you can see, our binding got sewn down very close to that V-junction. It's only about a quarter inch away, so we're not going to be required to put on a very large leather patch or umbrella patch there. All right, let's go back to the Brian's project again. We'll now go back to the fabric blank that we started with. This is with the uh, right angle binder. This is Brian again, finishing up that second side. Now to finish where the zipper stops and starts, Brian's going to use a patch of Sumbrella fabric on the underside, the side with the zipper. So he's going to use the hot knife to cut it to size and then he's going to fold it in half. Remember, if the sliders are not installed on the zipper, you need to put them on now because once the uh, patches are put on the two ends, there's no putting sliders on after that point unless you obviously rip it up again and then put the slider on and reattach the patch. Notice the zippers are facing so the two fat ends are facing each other, the large ends of the zipper. Now we're going to place this patch over the zipper and first we want to trim the zipper to size. Basically you want it trimmed 
so that it's almost flush with the uh, facing that we sewed on the opposite side. Remember this is the underside and uh, we're just going to use a square of Sunbrella fabric that has been cut out with the hot knives to prevent unraveling. And uh, Brian's going to sew along the uh, sides and then across the teeth and then along the other side. You'll notice with the MCSCR power system on the Sarite 111 sewing machine, we've got real slow speed control. It's phenomenal for that. So you can uh, basically get one stitch at a time. Brian's going to bury his needle, lift his foot, pivot on the needle, lower his foot, and now he's going to carefully wa walk or sew across the teeth. He's actually going to roll the balance wheel by hand here to prevent needle deflection. When the, if the needle were to hit a tooth, it could possibly break the needle or cause other issues. That's why typically he likes to walk the machine across the teeth. It's not a bad idea. We're going to show the rest of this in a uh, double time here to uh, quickly get through this process. Basically, we just want to show all the steps without boring you. All right, once the patch is installed on this uh, end of the zipper, We'll do the same procedure to the opposite. We will not show that. Now we're also going to install a leather patch to the uh, top side and we're going to speed through this cutting the leather out. This is a two to three ounce leather and uh, Brian's going to cut it so that it's a pleasing shape. Doesn't really matter what shape you cut. He's just going to make it a little bit of an arched top with a straight bottom. Okay, well, so we'll install that to the both ends of the uh, zipper. Make sure the sliders are out of the way when you take it to the sewing machine to sew. And position it so that it covers the uh, junction uh, where the zipper will stop. This will uh, hide any uh, of the binding that has actually not been sewn down to the canvas and uh, it'll help secure it in place as well. Okay, we're gonna speed through this as well. Uh, procedure is exactly the same. If your sewing machine has to uh, pass over the teeth of the zipper, it's a good idea to roll the balance wheel by hand to prevent needle deflection. And if you need to do any trimming to make it look a little bit better, you can do that after it's been sewn down in place. We didn't show installing the leather to the other end, but uh, here it is all complete. And she looks great. So this is the face, slit, and bind zipper approach. Typically this would be used in a backstay on a sailboat, or it could be used for any kind of object that has to protrude out of a zipper opening or a cover opening. The next zipper video coming soon will include a finished zipper where it opens up at the bottom instead of being sewn shut on the two ends. This type of zipper would typically be used in a cover application. Be watching the Sarah website or subscribe to the YouTube channel to see that video coming soon. It's your loyal patronage to Sarah that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your support.